This is our wrecked 981 Cayman GTS. I purchased this car after a massive front end collision, not knowing how bad this car was actually wrecked. To our surprise, past the front tub portion of the chassis, there seems to be no damage to the structural integrity of the car. And it seems like all we need is a brand new front tub and some miscellaneous parts. Easy enough, right? So far on this wrecked Cayman rebuild, we've got the car to the shop and started stripping things off. We found multiple miscellaneous pieces that we need to replace, such as plastics, sensors, clips. Oh yeah, did I mention an entirely new front end? Obviously when buying a wrecked car, you're going to need to replace loads of parts, which in my eyes was as easy as taking the parts off, finding the part number, and ordering the parts from Porsche. But man was I wrong. First thing we did was get a list of the part numbers for the most crucial parts of the car that need to be repaired, such as the front tub. Then we gave our local Porsche dealership a call to see the availability of the parts. This is the parts department, press two. Parts, Mike. Hey, how's it going, Mike? I have a uh, quick question for you, and I have uh, a couple part numbers to see if yeah. you'd be able to get some parts for me. Sure. Okay, so the first part number is going to be 99V. Okay. Yeah, that's a blocked part. I can't get that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Down to Hi, can I get over to parts, please? And that is a good part number. Comes back as a luggage compartment liner. Yes. Part number, however, this is a blocked part, meaning that they only supply it to certified Porsche facilities, direct from the factory. A repair shop. A certified collision. I see. Yes, I see. A certified collision shop. Uh, they only do this with parts that they deem uh, structural pieces. You got it, sir. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah, you. With all the Porsche parts being restricted, the only thing left to do now is just search. And search. And search. So that's exactly what we did. Me, Tim, and even Team Money searched weeks to find something that could work. But when we were almost ready to throw in the towel and find a shop, this happened. Again, I have no idea how we got so extremely lucky, but a few months ago when we went to go track the M2 at Laguna Seca, Tiana actually found this listing on eBay. A complete 981 front assembly from the strut tower forward. Everything that we need. With this being our only option to complete this car, we just had to send it 8 hours to Sacramento, sight unseen. Good morning guys, how's it going? Good man. Here, pick up some parts, or a part. We have a uh, Porsche GTS to our uh, Porsche Cayman tub, okay. front tub. Oh, yeah, yeah. This place is pretty cool. What do we do? I don't know. I'm kind of scared. Yeah, they got some cool things back there, guys. Whoa. There's a yellow one back there. I don't, I don't know. I have That's no idea. Now this one's risky. This is a lot of money for a part that we've never seen, or actually are even sure will work. But, if this is the correct part, we may have just hit the jackpot. We should be able to get that through the side door. Yeah. There she is. Is that the one you came for? I believe yeah. so. Well, Tub was off the rack, and after a quick look over, it was clear. We found exactly yeah. what we needed to do this damn project. Yes! The hardest part of the project. Success! No, well this is like 50% of it, because now we gotta do it. Yeah. Now we just gotta Life figure out like how- 10% of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yes, you guys have no idea how difficult this was. And it's the right one. Yes! Okay. Now I 
have no idea how we got this lucky after months of searching and almost giving up, we found an exact replacement for our 981 front tub. Like we said, this isn't even the half of it. Now that we've secured the full front assembly, the real fun starts. Now, why this is so huge is because this has every single piece that we need to fix this front end, we think. This is really cool as well because you can actually see a non rec tub compared to our front tub here, which is absolutely annihilated. So we are very, very lucky in that we can essentially just cut the front of our car off and replace it with this, which today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Yeah, Dustin, that sounds great, but it's also a lot easier said than done because we have zero experience doing any of this. And to be quite honest, we have no clue what we're getting ourselves into. I'm ready to be <laughs> the body shop guy that I never thought I would be, but that's, what's, but that's what it's gonna take. This is gonna be really eye-opening and it's gonna be great for us because once we do this, what's next? <laughs> Today with that, let's go ahead and start digging in and seeing what we gotta do to completely remove the front end of this Porsche off of our GTS. Now we're creeping up on the point of no return. We have to get our wrecked front tub off of the GTS. And in order to do that, everything connected to and in the way has gotta be removed. We started by removing the wire loom connected to the tub. This just pulled off with some clips. Then we moved inside the tub to remove grounds that were connected. Once everything was loose and disconnected, we could pull the wiring harness back and out of the way towards the chassis. Oh, are you ready for this, dude? Very fitting name for what's about to go down. All right, well, everything is off of the front tub that we need removed. We removed the wiring harness. Every nut and bolt off of this front tub is now replaced and back onto our new front tub right over here, which means we can get started chopping this thing off. Now, what's really cool about the front tubs and Porsches in general is like a giant Lego set. It all pieces together. Since this front tub is completely annihilated already, the easiest and the fastest way to remove this is gonna be to chop this freaking thing off. For the new tub, we actually have brand new frame rails that we'll be utilizing to put this tub onto here. So before we can do that, obviously, all of this from this point in the chassis forward has to be removed. And to do that, let's cut her off. And when I said cut it off, I quite literally meant cut it off. This is gonna save us loads of time. This probably makes no sense to you right now, but I promise later on in the series, you'll see exactly why we had to do this. We just cut the front end off of a Porsche. <laughs> Never in my 29 years of life did I ever see cutting the front end off of a Porsche in the cards, but this is one of the coolest damn things I've ever done in my whole life. Now, wow, I'm severely out of breath after that, dude. Now you can actually get in here and see what we're actually gonna be taking off and replacing, right in there. So now the fun part of drilling out all of the rivets yeah, we gotta get the and off. removing this frame piece so we can replace them with our new ones right over there. While the biggest chunk of the tub was removed, there was still a lot of work to do. Tim continued to cut the remaining portion of the tub, and doing this gave us better access to the portion of the frame rails that we'll have to remove in order to install our new frame rails and the new tub. Okay, now now I think we can officially say that uh, we've cut the front end off of a Porsche. This is the craziest shit we have ever done, dude. Ever. Look at this. Get in there. Get in there. 
This is crazy, but it's gonna save us a lot of time on yeah. the other piece. Yeah. Now we gotta get all these pieces that are important off. Hmm. Now you that can... saves us a chunk of time, but uh, there's still a lot of work to be done here. Dude, now you can uh, see obviously. that it's, it's not even bolted. So this is just seam sealed. Well, although it seems like we have most of the front end off, which don't get me wrong, we do, now we have to remove everything that's currently on the frame rails. And speaking of restricted parts, Tim actually found these guys. This is another restricted part that is not sold by Porsche directly. These are another part just like that front tub that is extremely rare and hard to find. Tim, how did you? I was just scrolling. <laughs> I found one and then I was like, well, if there's one, there's gotta be two. So then I found two and I just said, bye, 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 bye. Yeah. What this is, a, repl a replacement frame rail. And essentially, these are only for cars that are wrecked. So from Porsche, if we were able to buy a tub directly from them, they would have sent us essentially just this entire front piece oh, it's, disassembled. It's, it's this piece, this piece, and then the back piece and the frame rail slides in. Exactly, right there. So it would slide into that. Since we couldn't buy the tub directly from Porsche, that's why we got an entire front end from another wrecked car. Now, what the mission for this is, again, we have to get off everything from this point in the chassis, this point in the chassis forward. This is all a separate piece. As you can see, there's some kind of like seam sealer on top of the frame here that, that holds everything together. Like I told you guys throughout this whole thing, the Porsche is extremely modular. It's really cool because each part is different and there's different part numbers for each part and you can kind of piece it together. In our case, we need to take all of this off to get down to where this frame rail is, retain this because this guy is gonna slip in right here. And if you notice like all of this, it's kind of hard for me to explain, but notice all of this is the same, all of this right here. So this all has to be removed so that this piece can slide into the existing frame rail and pretty much replace all of this so that our new front top can bolt straight up to that. If that makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even me listening to this, it's confusing. The best thing we can do is just do it and show you guys. First things first, we need to get all of the adhesive and seam sealer off of the parts so it can reveal the body lines and the rivets holding it all together. Here you can get a really good look at how the seam sealer is connecting all of the panels together. Before we can move on, I found out that we have to remove our ABS system in order to reach some of the adhesive. So once we got that out of the way, it was time to rip. For this process, I'm using a grinder and a wire wheel, which is absolutely shredding through the adhesive. Now you can probably imagine how much fun this was. It's definitely one of the most time consuming parts and not to mention, we have to do this twice. Once the adhesive's off, the Porsche's true beauty shines. The way Porsche builds these cars is truly remarkable. Now the adhesive's off and the rivets are visible. It's time to remove the remaining parts and finish this job. To help us through this last part, we got special bits just for removing rivets. This should hopefully make it a little easier on us. about a million of these rivets so we took our time and made sure to get each one properly. Once the rivets were all drilled out it was time to start breaking apart the pieces. First we started on the piece connected to the strut tower
Yay! Holy crap, dude. So that was the one we had to save. So I, I drilled this one I shouldn't have, so I can just talk about it later. Okay. We have to save this piece here. And so this piece comes off. Yeah. This and this. Wow, so this just proves that we're on the right track. We are piece by piece disassembling this entire front end. And that probably would have taken us 10 times as long if we didn't just cut off the front end. So that's why we did it. Now we can just focus on all the smaller bits connecting it to the frame rails. Side one, down. This is how we have to take that apart. That is, that is wild. So all we need to do now on this one is get this piece off and then we can, we'll be able to use that one to measure out the distance we need. I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> oh. We were like standing there, not filming, <laughs> waiting. Son of a. And then it just dropped. We've done it. We have done it. Now, yeah, now, Tim, we can successfully say we have removed the entire front end off of this Cayman GTS. The whole front end. Look at this thing. Let's, uh, remo let's move this up a little. Holy crap. Now you can get an idea of how bad the stock frame rail is right now and how much we're gonna have to move. It got knocked this, like this. Yep, these are supposed to be straight. So what we're gonna do, since we have some meat on the end, we're gonna try and bend these over. As much as we possibly can to get them as straight as possible. Well, we will get them straight. Yeah. They'll get straight. It's just, if you look in here, you can see where the frame rail piece is. It's actually straight to that point. The only thing that bent was this right here. It buckled over. So we just have to make sure this comes back and it shouldn't be too difficult. We just gotta be careful it doesn't shift off the lift. And that is our challenge. That is going to be a massive, massive challenge and a massive undertaking for us getting this frame rail straight. Cause without that straight, none of this works properly. So that's what's next for us. Getting this straight and putting that, putting that on here. <laughs> Today was a large victory for this build, but not without its setbacks. With the front end removed, we can really get a sense of how bad the frame has shifted. Compared to what we originally thought, this is much worse than how it seemed. Now the real question is, with no experience and no tools for frame correction, how do we get this straight? And that is a question for the next episode. That is all the time that we have for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This one was definitely the most fun for me to not only film, but to edit. And not only is this entire series pushing the boundaries for Tim and I mechanically, but also for me creatively. I've been having so much fun like figuring out a storyline for this and filming things and just doing something completely different than we've ever done before. And I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? What do you, how do you think the series is going? Are you guys enjoying it? You liking the filming style? You like the content, etc. Let me know. I want to hear from you guys. Cause like I said, this is a completely different series than we've ever done before. And honestly, I'm addicted. Now that we're on to this and there's so much going on behind the scenes that you guys are going to see in upcoming episodes. And the point that we're at in the build is so insane inspiring i want to say it's just really cool and i'm very excited for you guys to see the progress upcoming but i think today's video was a massive success and a big step forward so with that we are one step closer to having porsche cayman gts street cup build more on that as well later so again i hope you guys enjoyed it that's all the time we're gonna have for today if you have not already please make sure you hit that like button because it really does help me out can we maybe hit 5,000 likes on this video that'd be sick if we could hit 5,000 likes and of course 
course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We are so close to 800K. I think we're creeping up on 798, which is insane. We're so close to 800K. Make sure to help share the channel, share the videos, because it really does help me out. And of course, don't forget to leave us a comment down below on what you think about the series. We will see you guys for episode number, episode number four. We're moving along. We'll see you guys for next week's episode four. Peace out.